So we've been talking about pressure, volume, and temperature changing, but in all of this, the amount of the gases stay the same. What if we change the amount of gas? Put more gas in, let gas out. Well, that's been studied as well. And here's a graph of the volume of a gas as you change how much gas is in that container. Now, this would be keeping temperature and pressure constant. So at, at zero gas present, then the volume would be zero. That makes sense. As you add more gas, the volume increases. And it's a linear relationship. So the volume of the gas increases linearly with the number of moles of gas in the sample. And this was first um, observed by Amadeo Avogadro, um, of Avogadro's number. Uh, he was born the same year our country was born in 1776. Um, and it's called Avogadro's Law. The volume of a gas and the amount of gas in moles are directly proportional. Um, this assumes constant temperature and pressure. So we can say the volume is proportional to N. N is the uh, symbol we use for amount of gas in moles. Um, or the way that's more useful for solving our problems would be this one. V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. This, this relationship makes sense because as you blow up a balloon, you're putting more air into it, right? And the balloon gets larger, not smaller. So it makes sense. You add more gas, the volume gets larger. Um, let's do an example here. A 4.8 liter sample of helium gas contains 0.22 moles of helium. How many additional moles of helium gas must be added to the sample to obtain a volume of 6.4 liters? This one's actually a little trickier than it may appear, but we'll just follow our same approach. So we'll make a table and uh, find the numbers and label them. So the first number we come to is 4.8 liters. And is that pressure, volume, temperature, or amount of gas? That's the volume. Um, it says it contains 0.22 moles of helium. So we write that down, 0.22 moles. And the, uh, that's the amount of gas, and that is symbolized by a lowercase n. How many additional moles, blah, 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 6.4 liters. So that's our other volume. So we've got our little table here with boxes filled in, and we're missing one box. So we'll call this box N2 because it's in column N and row 2. We look at these variables up here. We need the law that has those variables in it. Um, I'm, I just want to make sure I write it the same way that it's written there. V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. So again, a law with fractions in it. Clear the fractions by cross-multiplying. V1 N2 equals N1 V2. And we're trying to solve for N2, so we're going to divide by V1 so that we can get N2 by itself here. And we'll divide the other side by V1. Rewrite the equation. N2 equals N1 V2 divided by V1. And then we'll plug the numbers in. N1 was 0 0.22 moles. V2 is 6.4 liters, and V1 is 4.8 liters. Always write the units in there, and then see if they cross out correctly. You see that liters cancel liters. 
run the calculator. 0.22 times 6.4 divided by 4.8. All the numbers we're given have two sig figs, so our answer will have two significant figures as well. 0 0.29. And then I'm going to write down two extra digits, just as insurance. And then that would round to 0.29 moles. Now, what we need to do is go back and make sure that we've answered the question that was actually asked. We found out how many moles of gas are in the balloon. Well, it's not a balloon, is it? It's a sample. How many moles of helium are in the sample when the volume is 6.4 liters? But is that what the question asks? No, it says how many additional moles of helium gas must be added? So let's pretend it is a balloon. So the balloon has this volume, 4.8 liters. We wanted it to be 6.4 liters. We want to know how much more helium do we have to put in. What we found was how much helium there needs to be at the end. So if this is how much there is at the end, and this is how much they're started with, how do we find out how much was added? We subtract. So we're going to take 0.29 moles, the amount at the end, and subtract how much we started with. So 0 0.07 moles. And that's how much needed to be added to increase the volume to the desired amount. For Chem 3, I would consider that to be a tricky problem. It's not just straightforward calculate the thing. You have to think a little bit. Any questions? Let's do another one. Chemical reaction occurring in a cylinder equipped with a movable piston produces 0.58 moles of a gaseous product. If the cylinder contained 0.11 moles of gas before the reaction and had an initial volume of 2.1 liters, what was its volume after the reaction? Well, let's identify numbers and make a table. One and two. 0.58 moles. Um, what do we label that column? N for amount in moles. Um, so that's when it started and no. It produces 0.58 moles. Um, it contained 0.11 moles before the reaction. So put those there. Now, yeah, I, I understand that 0.11 was the first condition, and it's in, call, it's in row two. That's OK. The ones and the twos are just to keep the pairs associated with each other. They don't specify initial and final. So 0 0.11 moles before the reaction and an initial volume of 2.1 liters. So the volume when it was 0 0.11 moles is 2.1 liters. So that's the volume. What's the volume after the reaction? So we're looking for this missing piece. Now, does anyone find the wording of this a little disturbing? So the reaction produces 0.58 moles of this gas product, and the cylinder had some gas in it before the reaction. I think this is a poorly worded question. My question is, is the initial amount of gas consumed, or is it there in addition to the 0.58 moles that were produced? It is not at all clear, since this is just a lecture, demonst or lecture um, 
example. That's what it is. Lecture example, we can interpret it however we want. Since the previous problem was a little difficult, I'm going to interpret this in the easier fashion, and we're going to assume that the 0.11 moles of gas before the reaction was the reactant, and that all got used up, and we end up with 0.58 moles of gas at the end. But again, this is a poorly worded question. Okay, so we need Avogadro's law, V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Cross multiply to get rid of the pesky fractions. And then we're going to solve this time for V1. To get V1 by itself, we did divide by N2, and we do that to the both sides. So V1 is N1V2 over N2. Then we take our numbers and put them in. Um, N1 is 0.58 moles. V2 is 2.1 liters. And N2 is 0.11 moles. Always write the units. We look at the units, the moles cancel out. It's a good sign. Uh, 0.58 times 2.1 divided by 0.11. Again, we've got all two significant figures here. So volume 1 is 11.07 liters, which we would round to 11 liters. And then we need to ask ourselves, I didn't on the previous one, does the answer make sense? Well, in condition one, we've got 0.58 moles of gas. In condition two, we have 0.11 moles. So the smaller amount of gas has a smaller volume. The larger amount of gas has a larger volume. That makes sense. Any questions? 